addressing them. How do we now mainstream them into our medium term budget and expenditure framework in such a way that it will not be in the hands of the MBAs, but you see that there is a, a, a very strong framework at the national level. I'm sorry the bodies from Ministry of Budget and National Plan. I don't know whether they are here, and nobody is from, okay, thank God you are here, and nobody is from Ministry of Finance. These are the kind of things we need to do. You don't just leave this in the hands of the Ministry of Environment to begin to do. We have this kind of framework where the budget and national plan coordinates have a standard framework so that it will not be messed up. Before you see every MDA, if we don't do that and we sound this uh, climate change issue, you see every MDA budgeting for solar panels. You see every MDA budgeting for issues around climate change. And I don't know whether any of you have traveled on the road from Khan to Katsina. Yes. If you go, if you are traveling, they look to the left. You see that something was added in terms of wind, uh, wind, the windmills and all these things. Every time I pass through there, I, I, I feel like bleeding because you look and you see all the wind, uh, wind. Everything is already packed there and there are people that are grown by straws. Nothing is being done. And you know that the kind of wind you have there, you can generate it and please use it to, 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 to power the state or two. So that's it. So we have to do that national thing on uh, climate change. And that will now feed into the sectorial plans, the medium debt sector strategy of this key sector, the agriculture, the health, the petroleum resources, the environment. Without that national coordinated plan, you find that it will be abused at the ministerial level because people will need to do something without direction. From there, it now goes into the annual sector budget, and that moves to annual implementation. Here, we talk about priority sectors for climate adaptation, and that moves to monitoring, which I mentioned initially, that that is one of the problems we have in every sector of the economy, monitoring. Unfortunately, if you go to every MDA's budget, there is monitoring. And I am sorry to say that what they call monitoring is he lost chips. That is all. Everything about monitoring in our MDA is about he loss. I don't know what, why he loss. Is this synonymous with monitoring? Okay. <laughs> no. I have taken my time to look at the monitoring budget of every MDA. And all you see is he loss, he loss, he loss. Yeah. And they buy it every year. It doesn't make sense. So this is now the time we can because see when you now have this, you can see after that monitoring, it feeds it into what we call the mid-term review of national plan and sectoral plan. When you review your plan, from your monitoring report, you now feed into that. And that plan will be adjusted and the cost correction of implementation. You see where you have problems, where you need to implement well, learn lessons and have them corrected before you have your final evaluation, which goes back to the national plan. So if we can have this cycle from time to time with stakeholders like this, in fact, I was saying, I'll tell the president that if they want us to develop the framework for them, I can, I will volunteer to make sure that they have it. Yeah, okay. Unless they, but they will promise me that they will utilize it and involve us in monitoring and in evaluating it. Because that's the only way we can go ahead. If not, we will let me look at 2017 budgets. If this uh, climate change issues uh, get into some people's ear, you see that everybody will start budgeting for solar panels. Everybody will start budgeting for every kind of things, telling you that they want to mitigate uh, uh, climate change. So, I also looked at the cost methodologies. We can use bottom-up approach, we can also use cost uh, top-down approach. In terms of the top-down approach, we can use integrated macroeconomic models, which I know uh, somebody like Lyle Hamid would not like to hear, but it is still there. People are using it and they are getting something very meaningful. In terms of bottom-up approach, we can use the estimate of cost of greenhouse gas reduction from a given technology or mitigation activity. So for us to be able to say how much does it cost for this, for a unit of this, for a unit of this item, 
and so on and so on. And I said, sometimes when we talk about cost, cost is cost, but in terms of climate change, it may be something different. It may be a direct cost. It can also be an indirect cost. What do we mean by direct cost? The capital cost, the plant infrastructure, those are capital costs. Cost of capital, it depends on the interest. Times the interest, we talk about the operation, operational cost, looking at personnel, the maintenance cost, fuel cost, transmission cost. Somebody just said something that every MDAs are big listers making noise. In fact, I was in nine states. Uh, Monday to Wednesday. Every MPA we get to, they have this small generator, the 2900. So I was asking somebody, why not have something that supply you guys a central pool of it? And a central pool where you have electricity. You see all of them putting it by the side. In fact, I saw I passed my memo in one of the permanent secretaries of the state. That one powers only his office. So these are the kind of things you need to see and you need to ask yourself, are we really uh, talking about this? In terms of the indirect cost, we look at waste disposal. The environment itself, which is a big thing for us to talk about, the climate, how it has affected a lot of people. 